can you state your name and what you're doing now and the Namoka? Okay, hello, my name is Shalonda Lynch and I am a recent graduate from Augsburg College with um, a degree, Bachelor of Arts in Communication. I graduated December of 1998 and I came to Augsburg back in 1996 as, really as a junior. I had transferred from actually several colleges, the, the last one being the University of Minnesota. And I came in um, needing to be in an environment where I could get my, um, get things back together academically. I needed to be in an environment where the class size was small. That's one reason that I chose Oxford. And ever since that decision, everything has gone really well. My grades came back up. Um, I received a lot of support, um, first from the faculty and staff when I even came into um, the admissions office, and I received a lot of help there. And then I went on to register and went through the whole process and um, was enrolled in Augsburg, and I became involved with the Pan-African Student Union at that time under the direction of Ms. Anita Gay Hawthorne, and um, our relationship developed because she was more like I would say like a mother figure or like an aunt to me. She kind of took me under her wings and kind of explained to me, you know, these are the things that you need to be focusing on so that you can continue to do well in school. And just really to encourage me to pursue your goals and really to let you know that there is nothing that you can't do. She's, she's a very um, strong spiritual woman and she just continued to encourage me and the other students. Um, one thing when I came to Augsburg, I wanted to be very involved with extracurricular activities, and so I took part in basically everything the Pan-African Student Union had to offer. I did the um, Wrap and Ribs, which is a barbecue that we have to introduce new students into the school. I became involved with talent shows, and I was actually um, in a talent show where I placed third doing a poem that Anita gave me. It was, um, oh gosh, no, I can't even think of the name of it. But you can edit that part out. Oh. <laughs> and I just became involved with the Pan-African Student Union. I later became involved with the admissions office where I would go out and recruit minority students to come in to Augsburg. I became a tour guide. I gave tours. I did high school visits, um, basically just promoting, promoting Augsburg. Um, so what other, so those are all the activities you participated in, you just ran down for me. I participated in the Pan-African Student Union where I was involved with um, the mentoring programs. I attended those where we would have speakers come in and talk to the students about their experience here at Augsburg and how they got into their field where they're working now and it was just a source of encouragement, a source of networking um, which I found to be very helpful and I also became involved, you know, like I said, with the admissions office during recruiting. I was also involved in a lot of, quite a bit of public speaking. I spoke several times during chapel. I would MC different events throughout the year. Um, and those were the ways that I stayed active. Okay. And um, what opportunities did the Pan-African Student Union provide for you as far as being a black student here at Augsburg? Well, one, the, the little red brick house, um, that was just an outlet that was someplace you can go hang out in between classes, you can see your friends and just kind of let them know how things are going, whether you're having a good day or a bad day or just to, really just to relax among, you know, your own people. So it was a source of, um, I don't know, it was just almost like a family. Everyone in there knew one another and they were, you know, concerned about you and that was definitely expressed in that, um, 
in the house. Everyone was concerned for the other's well-being. The other opportunities that it provided for me, like I said, were the mentors. We were able to meet individuals in the community who had either come through Augsburg or else were just wanting to um, tell their story on how you know you can make it from school into the workplace. And so it provided me with um, some mentors and I was able to speak with people about you know their experiences and that that helped me as well. Um, what other opportunities? Well, how was your experience here um, at Augsburg College as a black student, being on campus, going to classes? What was your experience there? Being a minority on campus, for me, was never like an issue. I never had any, I will, I'll say that I never had any negative experiences. Um, I attended classes where there may only be one or two other minorities in the class, and I never had any problems with any of the instructors, with any of the other students. That was just my my experience. I can't say that is true for everyone, but I've my experience here at Augsburg has been very positive, both academically and socially. Okay. Um, can you give me an example of a positive experience socially? A positive experience socially, I think, was just being involved. Say, for example, being an MC at um, some of the events during like Black History Month, being able to um, meet individuals in the community and work with my uh, fellow classmates and fellow um, PASU officers like Chad Jackson, um, emceeing different programs and being involved with the uh, poem recitals and it just gave you a chance to, to meet other people in the community and sort of I don't know, broaden your, your networking horizon, so to speak. And how did it, uh, what about your academic experience? Can you give me an example of your positive experience there? Okay, I will say that a positive academic experience, um, because I was a communications major, was just taking those classes, you know, for my major. One class in particular, I guess that would stand out, would be you know my broadcast classes, broadcast one and two, with my instructor uh, Deb Redman, and she was very instrumental in encouraging me to pursue you know a broadcasting career, which I, to a certain degree, am still doing, but I have not, I have not come across anything yet. Um, another experience academically. Where it was positive, I was able to intern with the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'm a big NBA fan, and I was able to get that internship, one, through a very good friend of mine, Trina Bolden. So um, it's just really good to take advantage of um, the friends that you make here at Augsburg because you know it, it, it just helps you not only socially, but also um, you're able to enhance different opportunities, you're able to receive those. And so I was able to intern with the Timberwolves probably for the spring semester one year, and that was very positive. I received credit for it, and I got to go to all the games, and it was just a really positive experience. And from that, I've still, I'm still in contact with my managers there, and I'm actually, um, I've been interviewing for a couple positions with the Wolves, so that's what I'm looking forward to doing. <laughs> Okay, um, now uh, Emanita Gay Hawthorne, can you tell us about your relationship with her and what she meant to you and to the campus here? Miss Hawthorne, like I said, she was like, everyone called her mom, and she really was like our mom here on campus. She knew when you were doing right, she knew when you were doing wrong, not that I ever was, <laughs> but she was always looking out for you. She always had your best interest in mind. Um, you can go to her with any concern that was on your mind, whether you were having problems at school, whether you have problems with a relationship, um, and she would always, she would always sit down and listen to you. Um, she kept a busy schedule, but she would always make time to hear, you know, what it was that was on your heart, and then she would, in turn, um, 
give you positive encouragement. Sometimes she would just send you mail, like, I don't know, maybe a magazine or an article that she read, just something to keep you going. Um, what she meant to the campus. Um, I believe others viewed Anita as a strong individual. I think they saw her as nurturing, you know, because she, there were so many students that, you know, came to her for so many different things. And she, you know, met each one of them individually as though, you know, they were her own. So, I don't know, I just think she was just a very caring individual, very sincere, very honest, very, um, just a really good Christian person. So. Okay. Now what advice do you have to current students and incoming students? The current advice, or the advice that I would have for current students coming into Augsburg would be to get involved in extracurricular activities. Don't just come to school for the academics because there is so much more to um, education than just going to class. I mean, if you attend chapel, I mean, that's just a whole other example of, of how you can enrich your experience here. Um, whether you are Lutheran or not, if you attend chapel, you know, that's a way to get to know other students. It's a way to take time out of your day and just sort of regroup and re-energize yourself, I would say, become involved in um, other activities such as, you know, the mentoring program, take advantage of any, any sort of programs that bring in individuals from the community, get to know them, let them know what your interests are, exchange phone numbers. I would say definitely do a lot of networking. Um, go to the games, support the teams. Uh, big ups to Devin. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, just be involved socially as well as academically. That's what I would, that's what I would advise. Okay. Do you have anything else that you would like to add? Those are my questions. Ugh. I know I looked at the floor a lot, but maybe you could, I don't know, I, you'll fix it. <laughs> okay, now you sit down, did you? Uh-huh. Um. Too right, it's not a lot of headroom. You can lose as much hair as possible. Yep, it looks fine. My name is Trina Bolden. Um, I'm a recent graduate of Oxford College, graduated in May of 2000. Um, right now, I am working for the Pan-African Center, Oxford College, and um, I also go on auditions because I was a theater arts major with a double major in mass communication. And um, I also will be going on tour in the fall within the Heart of the Beast Puppet and Mass Theater I'll be touring to North Dakota, Wisconsin, and Minnesota performing. So that's what I'm up to now. Okay, and what brought you to Augsburg? Well, um, I got some information from Augsburg in the mail, and I'd never heard of this school before. So I just, you know, I thought, hmm, maybe I'll go for a visit, and I filled it out. And, my mom and I came here, we really, really liked it, and so we both decided that this was the school where I should be. So that's how I got here. Okay, and as a minority student on campus, how, tell us a little bit about that experience. Being a minority student on campus, well, I prefer to use the term ethnic person of different ethnic background. So being a person of uh, a different ethnic background here at Augsburg, I think it, it, for me it was a good positive experience, yet it was challenging in, in other aspects because um, you have to put forth a higher effort, you know, to be noticed. And to me, I'm a high, I put forth high, I set, you know, high standards and high priorities for me 
And so I knew, you know, that I would be successful. Yet, I know for other students it may be challenging, you know, but you can make it work here, you know. I thought my experience here was good. Um, there are a couple things that, you know, I had to deal with being co-chair of Pat Sue for the past two years, a few things that were just outrageous at times, but, you know, other, other times it was good. And how were you able to get through some of those more difficult times? Tell us, I guess, do you want to talk about that? Sure, that's fine. Well, I can tell you how I got through the times, and maybe I can give an example, but a lot of times I just had to lay down on my face and pray, pray for real, go to church, you know, to get separate myself from the environment, even go home for a weekend. Um, there was one incident where, well, there's been a couple of one incident where um, some students were very upset at some things that were happening here when I was a junior, and um, one of the students asked me if, if he could put, if we would be involved in them them uh, having a, what, a marching or taking over the president's office or whatever he was doing. And I told him, you know, give us more information and we'll get back to you. Well, he put our name on a flyer that he stuffed in everybody's mailbox saying that we supported whatever they said they had came up with. And he called CARE 11 to be here. I had a fit. <laughs> I had a serious fit on this guy because I just told him to give us some information. Just me telling you to give the information doesn't mean to put a name on whatever you're trying to get people to agree to do or causing a riot or a ruckus or whatever the case was. So I was very upset about that that caused me to snap. I, I actually snapped <laughs> on this guy. And I never had a problem out afterwards of him doing anything on the other hand. In other situations, I mean, dealing with security with our black males, you know, there's been a lot of issues. And a lot of the males, you know, would come and talk to me about it, but that's all. They didn't want, they didn't do anything other than, you know, and it's left up to me to go run and I guess, and give this information or try to help out. I mean, that's how I felt, you know, that I had to help out in some capacity as far as that went. So tell us about the Black Pan-African Student Union when you first came here to Augsburg. Pan-African Student Union when I first came here was awesome, bomb. Um, my fr I remember the first two people I ever met who were Black on this campus were Keith, Alan and Tut, Timothy Tutwiler. <laughs> and um, I had came during the summer before my freshman year to hand in some forms and to talk to Miss Anita. She wanted me to come in and meet her and everything because we hadn't had a chance to talk. So I came in and we were in the little red house um, over there and uh, they were working, them two, and I came and I sat in the corner and Keith and Tut turned around and looked at me and Tut goes, what, you think I'm gonna bite you? Why are you sitting over there in the corner? What, you think I'm going to buy you? And I'm like, no, I just don't know y'all. And he was like, come over here and meet us then. So um, I got a chance to meet them. And from since then, it's been I used to all my years here. My first two years here in college, when they were here, we used to just bother each other and talk about each other and play, you know, around like that. And um, Miss Anita drew me in um, and and help me see some things and how to handle people. Um, she also would, you know, just send me stuff in my mailbox. She nominated me for Who's Who Among American College Students and I got placed in the book and, you know, just a lot of things, you know, started from that, which was really wonderful for me. Tell us about some of the benefits to being a PASU member or even, um, co-chair of the Black Student Union? Well, I'll start with the benefits of being a PASU member and then co-chair. Um, the benefits of being a PASU member is that you have a fa family atmosphere. When I came, when I first got here, I had that family. I mean, the black students was like, if they didn't meet me or didn't know me, they saw I was new face, they grabbed me. Hey, who are you? My name is so-and-so, and what's your name? What are you? You're a freshman? Oh, well, why don't you come? We're kicking it, or we're going out here, or we'll be studying here. Why don't you come down and do that? I mean, that's the type of member membership we had back when I started and started college, and it was a lot of fun. The benefits were I was able to 
get with a group of people who were going through the same issues as I was. You know, if I had to vent, I could vent, even though I wasn't around that much my freshman year. Or if I wanted to just kick it, I could go kick it around my people. I could go to the Red House and talk to Miss Anita if I had any issues. Um, if I had homework issues, there were people who, you know, they had study groups, so I could, you know, get involved with that. Um, and also, Miss Anita helped a lot of students solve their academic issues here. If they were having problems with a professor, she made sure that, you know, everything was right. As far as being a, a past co-chair, the benefits are very good. You know, you get a lot of say-so in the politics and, you know, me being a co-chair, everybody for the past two years looked to me. It was like, Patsu, they would tell me, is Trina. They would tell me that while I was here. And the people would come to me, you know, why is this going on? Faculty members would come to me, other students would come to me and want me to be a spokesperson on behalf of the black students here at Augsburg. I mean, I would tell them, I can't speak for everybody, but this is how I feel, you know? So I was able to voice my opinions a lot being a co-chair, and that was the benefit of being a co-chair here, especially on this Lutheran campus. You know, I had a lot to say and it got heard. So that was very good. Okay, and what advice do you have for incoming students here at Oxford? For incoming students, I would say, get the best out of your college education while, you, while you're here. Um, it may seem that time wherever college campus you're on to, you're gonna have issues, you are, wherever you are, even if it's a, a, a black college, you're gonna have some issues. Yet, look, get to those resources. This college has a wide range of resources here that you can access, and you can access them, for, well not for free, you're paying for it, so while you're paying for it, you need to access all you can. And some students don't know that. Some students don't know there's a tutor center here. Some students don't know you can go to the library and get up on the net and pull off whatever you need or have them copy the stuff for you for free, you know? There's a lot of resources. That people don't even know that there's a career service learning center here that you can go get a job right here on campus. They can hook you up with a job in your major getting paid. You know, there's a lot of stuff here that people don't know about. Many scholarships that you can be involved in or get, you know. So I'll say is go search out those resources. Use what you have on the campus. Um, it's a lot. And um, don't, let, don't let anybody get you down. That's what I would say. Another thing I think that students, black students especially, need to band together here on this campus. Um, some people have told me that they think it's a loss of family atmosphere, they don't feel the love anymore or whatever. The love starts at home, so the love starts with you. So you need to get it together and start loving one another and stop tripping. That's what I would say. People tell me, well, th 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 no, no. You know what, it takes two people to get into a confrontation, you know? And if you got your stuff together, that other person, if they're trying to be in a conversation with you, they can't because you you going about your business as you should be, you know? And I think that's what needs to happen. People need to take responsibility for themselves and for their own actions and for the love not being here. That's how I feel, and band together. Because if you um, are divided on this campus, no way will anybody, anybody be able to make as much um, progress as we have because things start with black people. You know what I'm saying? We, on campus, we started with the Pan-African Student Union. They started the Pan-Asian Student Union. You know, we do the talent show. We do a, a fashion show. Everybody else come do a fashion show, you know? And so it starts here and we can change policies for everybody, you know? So we need to pull together on this campus and stop tripping. That would be my next advice for current students. Now, incoming students, it's all good. I just gotta come in and be happy, be eager and ready to learn and ready to conquer this campus, I would say, and get your degree and love one another too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Probably about almost 15 minutes or more. Say for me your name and your occupation. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> How many takes do I get on this thing? One. Oh God. Tammy Tyler Solarin, customer service specialist, American Express Financial Advisors. What years did you attend Oxford College? What years? From what years to what years? Mm -hmm. From ninety four to ninety eight. And what was your major? Business administration with an emphasis in marketing and a minor in political science. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's interesting to know because I would ask some questions after the interview. Okay. Okay. So while you were attending Oxford College, what activities were you involved in? Okay. While I was at Oxford, I was involved with the mainly the Pan African uh, Student Union organization, and that started my junior year here at Oxford. And also, um, my um, in my junior year, I was involved in the orientation. Uh, program and um, sports wise I was not involved in anything because I'm not athletic okay. I don't like to run <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay and um, what activities do you think helped you with your transition transition into college you mean coming from high school oh well what did you come here straight from high school yeah you did okay yeah. Yes. So what kind of activities back at my former school no, helped me prepare? No, what activities here at PASU, or not at PASU, excuse me, at Oxford College uh -huh. help you with the college atmosphere? Did any at all help you with college life in the atmosphere? Um, or making it easy for you to fit in? I, no, I did not have any problems fitting in. I... I'm pretty much uh, outgoing, and I really didn't focus on any, you know, sports or activities to help me interact with other students that go to school here. So um, nothing really, I guess, helped me in interacting with other students. I, I mean, being a part of past two influenced me, but I wouldn't count it as helping me fit in with the other students here. How did uh, being a part of PASU influence you? It developed my leadership skills uh, tremendously. I I was advised by my surrogate mother to um, take over the to kind of uh, take the leadership role. I am um, it. It's something that I think has helped me in both my personal and my professional life. I am. I like to do public speaking now, just minimal, not to 5,700, you know, whatever people, but that helped me uh, with uh, my leadership skills, like I uh, stated earlier, and it also um, helped in um, making me a more rounded, I guess, well-rounded person. and. I don't know, PASU is just, I guess, a big influence in what, uh, in me as a person, as a whole. Mm -hmm. And that has to do with, I guess, interacting with my peers, uh, finding, a, I guess, a focus or a goal that we both, I mean, that we all have to work at or with. Um, and I got to meet a lot of the, um, professors and things like that when I would go to meetings with Miss Gay. So that helped me out a lot. Okay. So was Miss Anita your surrogate mother that you were talking about? Yes, that was my surrogate mother. Who the heck else? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was my surrogate mother. Okay. Um, now, with your first couple of years of college, mm -hmm. Um, how was that for you? Like, what was your overall experience at Oxford and coming here? Okay, my first couple of years, I um, I was not um, I was not as focused as I should have been, and that was just coming. I was not I was ill prepared for college mm -hmm. with the 
studying aspect. With the social aspect, I was prepared for that, but the, the getting down and getting focused and and making sure I, I make better than average uh, grades in, in class was something that I had to um, that I had to work on going into my uh, my sophomore and my later year uh, my sophomore, junior and senior years. But my freshman year I was not what you would call a focus um, person in college. I was a partying person, but I was not very focused on what it is that I was trying to achieve and what my objectives were. I wasn't really focused on that. Um, but it was always an interesting you know, experience because coming into Augsburg, it's not so-called a preppy school or um, a um, scholastic school. It was, it was a diverse kind of an environment. You people from different, I guess, uh, background attended Augsburg. So I, I like that about it and the fact that it was located downtown gave it a different feel to it too. So it's always been a good experience. Interesting and good. Okay. Uh, what about it has been interesting? What about it has been interesting? Just like I, I mean what I said earlier, the, the location is really, I guess, uh, big focus for me because it's close to everything mm -hmm. you I mean the downtown shopping centers you can get part-time jobs downtown and the people you meet different type of people you know international students people from a small town coming into the big city experience so um that that's what's I guess made it interesting in a place that I wanted to wake up and go to every day for four years Okay. So. Okay. Now, um, back to I want to know what um, was your relationship like with Miss Anita? If you could talk about that a little bit and what she meant to you and on this campus. Ha! <laughs> How long is the video? For? <laughs> My relationship with Miss Anita uh, was at first kind of a. A distant uh, relative type uh, relationship I see her and she's always um, searching me out you know my first couple of years here but I was not very accepting of what whatever it is that she was trying to do at that time and as I grew older I started relating to her on a more personal level and she basically groomed me um, and made me see my potential I guess is what um, what I loved most about her uh, about her was the fact that she made me believe in things that I didn't think I myself could achieve and in being able to do that I <laughs> I was my mind. I was blown away when I saw the results of what um, she did with me personally, and my relationship with her. I guess is one of the most profound things that happened to me at Augsburg. It was, I guess, a privilege and an honor to have met her and um, talked to her, learned from her. And what she meant to Augsburg as a whole was, <laughs> that's, I guess, a tree of knowledge. She knew everything and knew people. She was good at networking. She knew people within and around the community. And she shared her, she shared her resources with the uh, Augsburg community. She brought in people like Mahmoud that, you know, I would probably never have had any interactions with, if not for Miss Anita. Uh, my mentor, who I still have a relationship with just because of her mentoring program that she uh, hooked us up together. And I mean, I, I don't know, she was the thing at Augsburg. If you can double underline that, the thing. She was the thing at Augsburg. And that, I guess, summarized my. <laughs>
relationship with Miss Anita. And what do you think the value was of, of having a person like her here on this campus? The value is uh, priceless. It gave you a home away from home for, I know a lot of the international students from different places in um, Africa. It was her little brick red house was like a, a place where you know you can go and just release. I mean, you even for, I mean, just for everybody. That was why it was called the Pan-African, you know, student house. It was not just catering to African-American students. It was just everybody. And it was a place where you could go when you have problems with housing. And, you know, when you feel you can't talk to your professors or anybody else on campus, Miss Anita was always the person that was your middle, the middleman. She helped you in communicating what it is that you needed to get out to this other professors with, you know, in a diplomatic and professional way. And she was always, 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 I'm looking for that word. She always comes through, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Her efforts are always just phenomenal. She just blows you away with how she takes what it, you might think is such a little thing, but the way she just puts so much effort into making it, making your stay here and you as a person grow, the effort she puts in it is phenomenal. I mean, you can never pay anybody to pay that much attention to your well-being and her value here. I, I don't even think you can... I mean, not that you can put a price to it, but I can't even, I can't describe it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just one of those people that is socially responsible. She's just there to give back, and never really wanted anything in return, but for you to give back to others. So, yeah. So what do you think the value was of having a Pan-African Student Center or services? available for all students we needed a place on campus a refuge for african-american and african students um, we needed a place where the other student population can come and interact with a you know with PASU if they choose to we had um, we have a place on we needed a place on campus that would bring the African American and the African students together in a place where they can both um, learn and appreciate you know each other um, it was a place that I think was and is needed on campus because you just when you come into a campus let's say from high school and you go in no matter what your background is it's always good to see and know something familiar and most places whether you're coming from high school you have your own little clique of friends that might just consist of you know mainly African Americans or Africans and when you go on campus you don't bring your cliques with you to your new school so you need something where you can relate to you know a certain set of group of people and that's what I think the past you house and the past you organization was able to provide to a lot of students a familiar place in an unfamiliar place Cold on okay. um, was there any um, examples of different activities that you participated in or social events that you could talk about uh, I know she, uh, Miss Anita, always had her wrap and ribs, where it's a welcome orientation for new students, and basically it's just you're rapping and you're eating, you're talking about yourself, you're interacting with other students, and you're meeting new people from different backgrounds. And when you when you have food, it's always a common thing, you know, that gets people there anyway. So that always helped bring a lot of. Uh, people that might otherwise not have attended. So you just come, you interact, you meet people, and you eat. Very simple, but effective. Okay, okay. Um, now what advice would you give to current and incoming students? What advice? Um, learn, learn, 
um, soak up as much as you possibly can and um, enjoy because when you get out when you get outside I don't want to sound all cliche and everything but when you get outside in the real world you don't find a lot of resources as you would when you're in college such as past two and all the other you know career centers and things of that sort so when you're here you should just take advantage of stuff like that and network network as much as you possibly can while you're in school because the, the more you learn that's good but the more people you know also provides you with different opportunities and different avenues so network like it's not even funny <laughs> just network um, I guess that would be my little advice yeah <laughs> now is there anything else that you want to add tell me what year were you co-chair Pan African Student Union what year was I <laughs> was it? I think it was it was was it 97, 98? 97, 98. Okay. Yeah, because I was 98, 99. Yes, I was 97, 98. Okay. Yes. 97, 98. I was a co-chair for this beautiful organization. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to add? Um... Hmm. No. Okay. Well, those are all the questions I have. Okay. That was easy, wasn't it? That was easy. Huh. I didn't hurt at all. No. <laughs> it didn't hurt. Did you guys get to edit and all that stuff? Oh, how fun. That's gonna